this presentation we are going to look at the Mogo Parks expedition the impact the result towards the successful exploration of the hinterland of Africa in one of our earlier presentations we looked at the motives behind the European exploration of Africa we looked at most of the uh, reasons behind that and one of them was to uh, determine the flowing pattern of the river Niger and some other rivers that are in the hinterland of Africa the period the Europeans explored Africa was a period that uh, the major intercontinental means of uh, transportation was through the waters, through the, through the oceans, with the use of the ships. And there were little or no cars in Africa. And the, 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 the issue of interior movement or movement inside Africa could only be possible with the use of the internal water bodies to so the Europeans thought or believed that the only effective means or the one of the effective means of having access to the hinterland in order to, to take in human or businessmen and their goods in and out of Africa was the use of, the, of rivers and having heard about the great river niger they wanted to know the flowing pattern another thing was uh, as well for the europeans to open up trading posts along the river or along the river bodies in the hinterland of africa in order to easily purchase goods and move them down to the um, coastal areas for the shipment from africa to europe one of the earliest people that tried to coordinate some level of uh, interest in the hinterland of Africa we are the, a group called African Association. The African Association were mainly British merchants that were highly interested in establishing business in Africa, where, where there may be some, Euro, some other Europeans that are part of this African association, but their major interest and their major push was towards the establishment of business between Europe and Africa. And this made them to look towards sending expedition or explorers that will work towards the, the actualization of, this, of their desire. For this reason, they decided to sponsor the exploration of a Scottish doctor known as Mungo Park. Mungo Park started from England in May 1795. He set off from Gambia. From Gambia, he entered into the hinterland of Africa. But when we say hinterland of Africa, we are talking about the interior of Africa not actually the coastal areas before this period europeans when they come with their ship they were they docked their ship as the coastal areas did business within that area and returned back to europe but they wanted to go into africa to assess business inside of africa so mungo park and his men went in to africa through the gambia towards the end of 1795 well, uh, he actually made two expeditions, but let's take one, one after the other. The first one started in 1795 and took him to Gambia. From Gambia, he gave to Segu. In 1796, he saw the river Niger for the first time at uh, Segu. He documented his ex the excitement, excitement that he felt having seen the river Niger 
like this. Let me actually read a part of his uh, report. He said, I saw with infinite pleasure, uh, well, I'm quoting now, I saw with infinite pleasure the great object of my mission, the long sought for majestic Niger, glittering in the morning sun as wide as the Thames at West Minister and flowing to the eastwards, I hastened to the brink, and having drunk the water, lifted up my fervent tongues in prayer to the great ruler of all things. For thus, for, uh, for, for having thus far crowned my endeavor with success. After a little further journey, he went back to England. In Europe, Pax's account of the journey aroused great joy and enthusiasm mainly among the people that sponsored him that were the African Association. And the African Association saw his account as a gateway to establishment of business between Europe or between traders, merchants from Europe and Af Africans. Well, this report of Mungupa got to the British, and the British showed high interest in further exploring Africa. Now, this exploration was actually focused on the West African subregion, because that was from where these, this particular river, you know, tried to tend to cover most of the areas. So the British sponsored the second Mungo Park's expedition, which started in 1805. In his company, we are experts in relevant fields such as sellers, soldiers, carpenters, and an African guide, and as well, an interpreter, an African interpreter called uh, Isaaco, who was familiar with the hinterland of Africa. From Gambia, Mungo Park and his team of 44 people went inland and reached Sarsandin. By this time, of the 44 Europeans who left the Gambia, only five, including Mungo Park, were alive. The rest haven't died of tropical diseases. Well, at Sarsandin, the five people built a boat with which they entered the river Niger. They named this boat Joliba. But before they started sailing down the river Niger, Mungo Park sent back Isaac to Gambia with a letter and reports of their journey so far. In their journey down the river with a local guide called Amadi Fatuma, the touched places, the touched places like Timbuktu, Yauri, which is the present day Hausa land, before they reached Busa, where their boat was said to have, uh, you know, rocked. And both Mongo Park and his men died. But the, the cause of the death of Mungo Park and his men have been a thing, a thing of uh, some level of disagreement by some uh, Europeans, uh, by, by, by some historians, not actually Europeans. Some historians believed that Mungo Park and his men died after their boats capsided in the water. Why some historians believe or claim that Mungo Park and his men were killed by some local warriors? Well, the only survivor was a slave, or the slave, their guide, who was uh, Amadou Fatuma, that actually, you know, tried to discuss about the tragedy. Amadou had earlier been discharged by Mungo Park before they died at Pusa. So we, 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 he was able to take back the report put up by Mungo Park that was sent back to the, the sailors waiting for him at the ship, which we are 
which uh, were transmitted by to uh, to, Brit to Britain. Now, with the uh, well uh, success of, of the Mungpa's expedition, the British government sent more explorers in order to continue the work that Mungo Park started. Other explorers like Hugh Clapperton came after Mungo Park, who maybe we have to discuss them one after the other extensively after this uh, particular presentation. Now, there were some issues in history that tend to bring in, to, to bring in problem. Some historians, mainly pro European historians, tend to project this particular situation in a very wrong way. They tend to refer to Mungo Park as the person that discovered the river Niger, which is a wrong information. The river, the river has been there for long before Mungo Park's coming, and Africans have been using it. And, they, and for, for, for someone to refer to Mungo Park as the founder of the river Niger, or the, 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 the person that discovered the river Niger, was a wrong presentation. Well, please uh, subscribe to our channel, click on the notification icon so that anytime we drop a new content, you will be one of the earliest persons to be notified. Thanks for still being part of our channel.